A very good evening to everyone. Welcome to Global Online. And here we are back with our UGC NTA net preparation for paper one. And this preparation is for your upcoming examination, which is scheduled in the month of June 2024. So we uh, at Global Online has brought for you marathon series. Now these marathon series, we have started with the first unit that is teaching aptitude. And in today's marathon series, we will be completing the following list of topic, which includes learner and teacher center methods, teaching software, methods of teaching, questions on Swayam, Swayam Prabha moves, a technological, pedagogical content knowledge, as well as formative and summative uh, evaluation and many more. Apart from this, one very important announcement for all the students preparing for your net examination for June 2024 cycle, that is from the upcoming week, it's 20. 2nd of April 2024, we are launching our new batches and these batches will be live on the app and these batches, uh, you it's basically for you all who are preparing for June 2024 examination, how to join these batches and how to go ahead with the preparation, I'll be telling you very shortly, but make sure that first your focus and concentration is on all the topics which we are going to cover. So I've brought some around 30 MCQs for you all. So make sure that you are listing this 30 MCQs very well because these topics are repeated every now and then. And you also have to mention the scores in the box, chat box so that we come to know that what exactly is your preparation level and how we can speed up uh, or help you out to prepare your for your preparation for June 2024 examination. So let's start with the series over here. All the best to everyone. Just make sure after every question you write down your scores and do update the final scores after the uh, end of the session. So here comes the first question on the screen. Which of the following statements best describe brainstorming method of teaching? So obviously there are various methods of teaching and out of them they are asking us what they are asking us the specific method that is called as your brainstorming method of teaching. So when I talk about teaching methods, right? So as I said, there are various methods of teaching, right? So under these methods, what exactly we are talking about? We have lecture method, demonstration method. We have, you know, a team teaching method. We have project method, assignment method. There are lists, there are n number of methods. But here the specific question is on what is on brainstorming. So in brainstorming, which particular topic, I mean to say from the given list, suits in? So we have production of large number of ideas, small steps, presentation, content delivery in a lucid, that is simple language or theme based interaction among participants. This is a long list. Now, any student who does, a, does not know what is brainstorming. So let me first update you with the brainstorming, right? So brainstorming basically is nothing but it is brain, which is, you know, divided into two parts, brain and storming. So brain is the cognitive ability which produces thoughts. And storming, it helps to generate the storm of these thoughts, that is ideas. So ideally, brainstorming refers to creative idea generation process. And in this creative idea generation process can be divided into two parts, that is your traditional method and modern method. Now, many of you, or it is also called as, you know, advanced method. So many of you may be not aware, okay, what is this traditional or what is this modern? We are doing it for the first time. So let me brief you about that also. So when I say traditional brainstorming method, which is a basic brainstorming method, where you help the students, you know, to come up with their uh, ideas as per their space and help, you know, to en uh, help to encourage the students to build up the ideas without any judgment or evaluation. That is your traditional brainstorming process which we know about or which we keep on doing. But what is this ad advanced brainstorming and what differently happens over here? So advanced brainstorming is first of all nothing new but an extension to your traditional storming, brainstorming. And how it is an extension because this particular process helps, you know, the, the, the candidates, the students to come up with, you know, their uh, to reduce by reducing their inhibitions it means shyness okay and these examples can be uh, bringing up or coming up with creative uh, lateral thinking technique as one of the brainstorming you know software with the use of brainstorming software or tools and that is nothing but called as advanced brainstorming right so this was the uh, the concept of brainstorming coming back to our question 
the statement which describe brainstorming so right now whatever i have in, uh, explained you you understood it is basically about what ideas right so if you see all the options over here there is only one option which talks about the production of ideas rest talks about presentation content delivery or theme based interaction among the participants so the right answer is yes 100% is production of large ideas so this is what you helps you to score uh, two marks for your one question as i told you keep updating your scores some simple questions also are there where we will be going little faster and where i feel it lot of explanation is needed i'll make sure that questions are explained well right coming to question number 2 which of the following are learner centered methods so when i talk about learner centered method where the learner plays an active role okay there is a flexibility for the learner teacher role is only providing assistance so this is a basic gen general information about learner centered method so they are asking you to list down the characteristics of learner centered method so it is based on rigid curriculum it is centered on cooperative determination it is mainly centered on teacher needs it emphasizes on you know var uh, variety of exposure now please make sure in this particular series only i have added more questions on learner centered approach so make sure that you are understanding this question very well this question itself can be twisted and brought up with a new question so just pay attention right so now see you when you get such type of questions okay maybe you little bit are tense your uh, uh, level of anxiety is more so make sure in such questions no you try to eliminate the options which do not stand right so when i say learner centered method so as i told you learner it means here the learners are active and teachers play the role of passive right teachers are passive so if you see the options it is based on rigid curriculum maybe you are not aware it is you know cooperative determination you are not aware it is mainly centered on teacher needs so this is something which we know it's obviously learner centered it is centered on learner need not teacher need so option number c you can just cross it out because you are very sure it is you know it is not a part of your answer now the rest of the options you don't know so try to understand again rigid curriculum so when we say learner more role plays on activity of learner right so rigid can you know obviously learner centered it means it has to be progressive develop you development so rigid again cannot be a right option so your a also goes out of question so your right answer becomes b and d ideally so check what is b okay it is cooperative determination for the subject matter yes and yes it is learner centered active active learner where the exposure should be more so your b and d stands to be what c right answers so please try to follow these method because this elimination method will really help you out coming to the answer closer rather than thinking on all the aspects because it will save your time it will help you to you know come to the answer quickly coming to the next question swayam prabha okay the question is on swayam prabha the channel or uh, of swayam prabha are linked from bsac right so this is the question now when we talk about this question so this question basically is you know uh, first of all talking about swayam prabha it's now what is swayam prabha initiative by whom it is an initiative by ministry of human resource development which is you know which is developed in order to provide high quality uh, you know educational channels to the students 24 24 by 7 right so that it helps the students to get you know uh, the uh, especially who are at uh, who are with a digital divide they can get an uh, assistance through this it will help them to go through the innovative and modern technology and this particular uh, channel as i said it was launched by ministry of uh, human resource development uh, it was developed by them initiated and developed by them and it was you know uh, supported by all india technical council of Uh, for technical education that is ai city and microsoft right so now here they are asking us the channel are applying from bsac what okay aurangabad hyderabad gandhi nagar and bangalore so first of all talking about now yes again as i told you when you are studying mcqs make sure that you are studying every aspect of mcqs so even if any question comes out of it you should be able to answer the question very well so talking about bsac so what is bsac it is nothing but bhaskaracharya institute for space and 
application and geoinformatics which has three domain that is satellite geoinformatics and geographics right now yes it is it it was now basically to understand uh, you know about bsac so bsac again as i told you what exactly it is uh, meant for now coming about uh, bsac talking about bsac as i said what exactly is it does you know what is the role of bsac so in case if you are still not you know aware about the uh, function of bsac so uh, it basically it is something which talks about you know it is it is something which comes under ministry of electronics and information technology this also you should be aware and its basic function is you know development planning and development of the activities with reference to various sectors in with the help of government so coordination comes with it and i also told you about you know about their uh, who is the uh, with with the help of you know what exactly with the uh, development and planning and how this has three main uh, domain areas that is satellite geoinformatics and geospatial so this is what we have studied about bsac but which bsac so they are uh, operate they are asking about uh, which bsac it was so it was you know full form i have told you aurangabad hyderabad or it was uh, it is basically gandhinagar or bangalore so may maybe many of you are uh, aware about this question still i have given you uh, good examples so this particular is talking about it was uh, uh, in the place called gandhinagar right so it is basically in the place gandhinagar so you should be aware of this very well important concept it can come uh, at any time in case if it is asking about establishment year so it was establishment year was december 2003 motto was we serve the society that was the motto so you should know now see this as one of the mcqs you know it is you know uh, gandhinagar but you should go little bit in deep understanding the the full form of bsac what exactly it does what exactly you know it talks in education sector as i said planning and development with respect to research with respect to you know uh, technology and then what are the domains when it was established and what is the motto so any question can come you can easily answer it out right now coming to the next question we are talking about what we are talking about yes i hope it is yeah you have fourth question going on statement questions we have tpac okay now first of all what is tpac for your understanding i have wrote maybe in the exams as i told ugc nta net is focusing more on you know uh, acronyms so tpac technological pedagogical content knowledge what is this we will come to it okay it has been developed by mishra and kochler and second is its framework comprises of six components this is what the question is so coming with respect to talking about with respect to tpac it is nothing but it is a form of knowledge that goes beyond the core components so what is that that is it it includes content it includes the pedagogy and it includes the technology right so let's understand about this in case if you are not aware at, at all let's let's find out so tpac as i said it is something concerned uh, consisting of con uh, technology pedagog pedagogy and the content right it has seven you know components seven components that is the knowledge okay with different technology knowledge with respect to teaching and learning knowledge with respect to subject matter knowledge with respect to how teaching learning can change knowledge with respect to the content knowledge to combine the content and the teaching learning and togetherly it can comprises of you know uh, the knowledge which is combined with uh, pedagogy as well as content and technology so these are the seven components right our question was it was developed by whom and it was you know it consists of how many components so we know that it was developed so statement 1 stands to be very correct it was developed by mishra and kochler in 2006 but it does not have six components it has seven components please make a note of it right so you should now little bit you know take more information about you know i have given you the three domain core areas okay interaction i have told you seven components I have told you now what this component stats sorry stands for it's also discussed 
coming to question number 5 so it is talking about summative now we know evaluation we have summative evaluation diagnostic evaluation uh, formative evaluation placement evaluation i have taken some questions out of that also so the question is on summative so before we go to the question immediately understand summative evaluation so what is taught to you it is like a cumulative evaluation now what is this cumulative which gets add up okay and which comes at the end right so which of the following statement describes now see it is straight away simple question which describes summative evaluation the teacher clarifies the doubt a teacher awards the grade uh, during interaction in the classroom the teacher provides feedback the learner's motivation is raised by the teacher during the feedback this is what the topic is about okay so read it again if you are not clear teacher clarifies the doubt so we know there is something called as for formative evaluation doubts are cleared you know on the continuous basis for improvement so this basically does not comes under summative it comes formative teacher awards grade but when see after having transacted the course so this is the possibility of the answer but still we have two to go during interaction so this is something which is done again on a continuous basis so this is something called as formative the learner's motivation is raised through question answer again this is you know uh, with respect to formative so all the option stands to be formative now we have one option left that uh, it's nothing but it is talking about summative a teacher awards grade to the students after the entire course is completed right now Talking about next question, now see we have again question on learner-centered approach. I told you know I have added some questions more on learner-centered. So learner-centered approach is centered on teacher needs. We have done this question very well and in fact this statement also. So you know very well learner-centered is passive. Uh, where teacher is passive, learner is active. So straight away you get this statement what it is. Second statement says that learner-centered approach is a centered on cooperative determination of the subject. So, yes, it is which we have also learned. So, which is obvious. See, you, when the moment you try to uh, see the MCQs, no, you have to keep on putting question for yourself in order to get the answer. So, yes, uh, statement 1 stands to be incorrect, whereas statement 2 stands to be correct. We have done similar type of question, but that question was in the code and this question was in statement form, right? Coming to the next question. Now, next question is based on two topics. One is the zone of proximal development. I'll read the first, the question, no doubt. And second is about Piaget's theory, right? So, which of the following technique is to provide the right kind of support and right amount and right time to increase the child's competency? That is nothing but skills, right? So, we have the options called as scaffolding. We have the options called as assistance. We have the options called as accommodation and schemas. Now, what is the schemas? It's nothing but pattern, right? I'll come to all the options. First, let me explain you the concept of zonal proximal development. Now, what does that mean that uh, learners, you know, they depend on, you know, like for example, for some topics, they may depend upon their teacher. For some topics, they may depend upon their uh, peers, right? Peer. So, there are, there is some, may, they may know and some they have to take an assistance. So, this assistance is either given by the teacher or peer till the time the learner is aware. So, that assistance is nothing but it is called as, you know, scaffolding. Now, immediately don't come, okay, the answer is right, scaffolding. First, listen to the concept very well. So, it is called as what? It is called as scaffolding, right? Now, this particular question, the scaffolding will be provided only till the time the learner is, you know, uh, prepared. Assistance, yes, support. Accommodation. Now, when I say accommodation, it, you know, it is... Uh, it is basically to alter the ideas or the pattern of a result, okay, based on some new experiences. So, you have some new experiences based on that you are altering. But here we do not find any some any, anything like altering. Schemas pattern also we do not find. So, now if you see, so you may have a doubt whether it is assistance or scaffolding. But I told you there is a technical word which talks about providing right support a right amount and right time. So, in technical terms, that word is nothing but it is called as scaffolding, right? So, this actually question is given in some old uh, previous year questions also, but in a very different form, okay? There they have written zone of uh, proximal development, Lee-Bittogos's, you know, concept. But here they have just twisted it and given in a different type, but you should know what exactly, you know, scaffolding means. That is very important. 
got coming to the next question now see we have question again on swayam prabha now we when i when i took the first question that is the question number 2 i discussed this but i hope you people have uh, put your attention during that if you know it you can answer this question it should be on tip of your tongue that's swayam prabha as a platform learning platform is initiated or developed by whom ministry of human resource development that is nothing but called as ministry of education now you just see consortium of education commission or aict so yes if it should be as i said this answer should be really quick uh, because you have done this very well and this should be you know on the tip of the tongue because swayam prabha is a very common topic and this is very common question so it is uh, initiated by uh, ministry of human resource development developed by aict and supported by microsoft right now this is as i said you know sometimes you get very simple question but what happens you know you have uh, not revised it so that's the reason i i keep on saying students whatever amount of studies you have completed make sure that you revise those things on a daily you know at least on a interval basis regular intervals otherwise you feel that okay i studied everything but last moment i went blank that is just because you couldn't revise your concepts on time and revision should not take place just before the examination it should have a good amount of time so that your mind is you know capturing the topics very well before the exam but a, with a good uh, leisure time your revision should happen okay now coming to next question a learner combines now see this also i've taught you but still i'll, I'll I, i hope you remember otherwise not if i'll explain you this concept okay so this concept is actually from piaget's theory of cognitive development a learner combine his or her previous schemes that is pattern as i said or modify them modify is nothing but alter them as per the new experience i have told you i have taught you this just few minutes back this process is called as what accommodation assimilation adaptation equilibration so what is this are new terms assimilation it means you know when a learner uh, comes across a new ideas and a uh, fit into that okay that is called as assimilation schemes uh, sorry adaptation adaptation when you are talking about you know you are trying to get into it and equilibration it talks about it, it it's like a, a mechanism that helps to achieve a balance equal so equilibrium it's nothing but a balance adaptation it's nothing but you know to gel into it assimilation is nothing but to ensure that you know you are trying to uh, you know fit in it assimilate and is fit in it right so this is what we have and now we are talking about the the question is basically about what the question is basically about modifying and altering so in piaget's theory okay the concept of assimilation accommodation uh, and equilibrium you know are actually the strength of the student or the child in order to understand uh, with new experience along with what is already learned so this this uh, concepts are used there so as per our question the concept is about altering the pattern so that is nothing but it is called as accommodation right coming to the next question which of the following curriculum development models okay come under technical scientific model so this is what the model is now let's say what exactly so they have given you you know the models and you have to recognize you know which models are come under technical scientific model so when we are talking about technical scientific model okay what exactly it is you know uh, talking about so when we say technical scientific model it is something you know it's a universal uh, uh, you can say accept uh, aspect it it talks about the knowledge which is essential for the students to learn uh, help them to what uh, does uh, create the interest help them to understand the body of knowledge with the help of skill sets with the help of you know uh, with the help of their uh, textbooks information with the help of the learning materials which is provided to them so here it is talking about this model gives you know importance to the content it gives importance to the approach it is gives importance to the material it gives importance to the objectivity and all those concepts right so when we talk about these technical scientific models they are basically involved in curriculum development so please try to understand what i'm teaching 
you may get a question that technical scientific models are basically for what so they are basically for curriculum development right so when we talk about this technical uh, scientific models they actually have a top down approach okay so that begins it means it starts with the knowledge okay and skills the students learn and they then they develop you know the curriculum which will help the students to help acquire this knowledge so this is its top down approach right so when we talk about these models it is basically what does it comes into open classroom model does it comes into tabas model does it comes into weston or uh, fantini model or does this comes into the uh, rogers model so it's looking at these models okay let's understand so when i say these models okay so when i talk about open classroom model it is about openness flexibility collaboration okay students uh, autonomy these are the concepts which comes under what your open classroom model fine when i talk about taba model okay of curriculum development it it's talking about planning okay it is talking about the strategies okay and it is also you know it was designed by hilda taba so somewhere you can see this hilda taba model okay now when we talk about um, what this model talked uh, spoke about idea generation information organization all these concepts right now when we talk about westin's model okay westin's and fantini model so it is basically talking about what it is talking about new content okay so that you know you help the learner to get uh, keep the learning process you know going on right and when we talk about so make sure these models if you have not learned at least you have noted somewhere and you learn it revise it okay and when we talk about uh, roger model so it is talking about uh, various types of you know innovators of uh, adopters which is talking about what this is talking about uh, getting the information and with this maybe the information is little uh, some and with that you are processing ahead accelerating promoting fine so based on all the concepts here it was curriculum development comes under what where we talk about planning strategy organization and that we know it comes under tabas model because here we talk about flexibility here we talk about generation of something new and here we spoke about what accelerating the change so as per the question tabas model is the right answer coming to the next question now next question is very basic question good teaching requirements so if i want to say that it is good teaching so what exactly it tells now see you can go with my elimination way uh, responsiveness appropriate response knowledge maintaining interpersonal relationship a uh, ship sorry strict adherence to a rigid teaching plan so if you want to go, have a good teaching you cannot have strictness and rigid uh, planning so e option wherever you see e option is cancelled straight away you get the answer is option number 2 you don't have to think also see but you have to have confidence correlated understand the concept okay try to you know put um, uh, questions on it and you will clearly get it is not uh, any other thing but it is obviously the rest of the points comes right because strict knowledge as uh, sorry strict uh, uh, rules and strict uh, rigid plan will not work at all got it coming to question number 12 again very easy question in fact after pandemic you know these questions are little bit increasing but uh, somehow it, there is some easy hint also so which is the advantage of online learning over uh, offline limited access flexibility high cost interactive see advantage so limited access no high cost okay depends what type of institute but that does not makes it as an advantage interactive not at but some very important advantage is flexibility at any convenient time from anywhere you can you know learn that is more important right coming to next question question number 13 which we have done one topic here it is asking about evaluation or assessment methods during the course of instruction so we started just now summative where we started at that time i told you diagnostic is there formative is there summative is there placement so placement tells you to understand the domain summative at the end formative is continuous you can say diagnostic is to find out the root cause right it is talking about during means you know entire uh, uh, like for example with the process of entire uh, course so that is nothing but it is your formative assessment right so there is one type of assessment it will come 
in your maybe in one of the uh, a marathon only i'll take that question it is basically called as is if satir okay if satir assessment i hope maybe you have come across this if not we will do one question on this but basically this question is or uh, this type of assessment where the students performance okay individual performance is uh, mapped with his own performance which is previous so previous and present performance when they are mapped for an individual student a specific student it is called as ipsative assessment so keep in mind i'll bring one question based on this okay uh, fine now coming to the next question piaget theory see this just now we did one question on piaget theory so here they are talking about a development of the theory the theory is you know ascending stages concretive preoccupational sensory motor and formal so in one of my session i have already discussed on this that what are the stages of piaget you know we have discussed this very well and they are very this is a very straight forward question so we know it starts with what it starts with sensory motor then it goes ahead with your preoccupational then it's uh, then it goes ahead with your concrete operational sorry and then it goes with formal operational so you have to arrange it ascending order so i just now i told you sensory preoccupational concrete and formal so b is last one so where seen two now see so this will be out okay but now dear see in such questions you have to be careful d comes both the way so then go with the option so it should be c b a d c b a d so see your right answer comes to be option number 2 so this this topic i have done in my one of the theory class and don't worry in next session i'll come up with marathon uh, crash Uh, topics crash course topics to be studied for teaching aptitude right okay coming to the next question what is the benefit of collaborative learning that is the question okay so please try to first understand what is collaborative learning collaborative learning it means learning uh, done in a group in order to en enhance your working together it's like a group uh, study a team activity team spirit so communication understanding decrease understanding increase motivation more opportunities problem solving again follow el em elimination uh, pattern with collaborative learning with group learning will your communication improve will your understanding get decrease with your motivation increase opportunity increase problem solving will be enhanced so which can be odd man out so looking at all the options obviously decrease understanding option number b so if you see that will not come okay but here only two places b has cancelled then c uh, opportunity will increase motivation will increase communication will improve it means a c d should be there so uh, ideally this also will get cross out and your right answer will be c a c d e okay so uh, see it is this is one of the really easiest method but it sh you sh this should this will come only after practice and it's a skill you should practice as perfectly it becomes easier right 15 questions we have crossed i hope half of the questions we have crossed so 50% we have done so 15 into 2 it means for 30 marks you should see where you are standing and don't worry we have a lot to go okay let's let's complete this and then you can put your scores and don't give up maybe the questions are completely new different just just make sure that you are learning well that is very important right coming to question number 16 which is a game based platform so this i am talking about you know with reference to your uh, with reference to your uh, the teaching software so classcraft padlet google classroom kahoot what exactly you know it is so when we talk about classcraft so classcraft is nothing but you know a partner engaging in you know uh, solutions in order to ensure that there is a better outcome with gamifying learning padlet as i said it's an technology uh, google classroom we all are aware about okay then we have something called as kahoot a game based learning so here they are talking about game based platform but it is used to create quiz conversation and survey so which of them stands to be right so looking after all okay whether it is classcraft padlet google classroom kahoot is the one which gives you the game based platform including quiz conversation and survey right coming next again the same uh, type of question game based platforms 
okay sorry i i think the question sequence went wrong so kahoot socrative quizzes e pg partshala edimodo now see we studied kahoot okay socrative if you not not knowing this is also a a platform which is talking about you know online tool for teachers in order to assess the students quizzes does the same thing e pg partshala is an initiative for high quality uh, curriculum development which is uh, available in all the disciplines including 17 70 subjects sorry and e edimodo is nothing but educational website right so looking at all the platform looking at all the options the platforms are kahoot socrative and quiz e pg partshala and e edimodo does not comes as a gaming platform they are available okay with the uh, online uh, you know educational content but not as a game platform game based learning platform sorry coming to the next question is uh, padlet just now we did no so padlet is a game based platform right in order to create quizzes conversation and surveys and they have given a new platform that is seesaw uh, which is talking about allowing the students to work together on text pdf uh, drawings and videos so seesaw is again a learning platform which helps you know to combine the instructional designs with um, uh, the lessons not only for students but also for teachers so out of both the statements if you see the statements padlet as i said padlet is nothing but you know it is a, a platform which talks about what educational technology a software okay where you can upload the content in the form of uh, your virtual content okay like a bulletin board but it does not not allow to create quiz conversation so statement 1 stands to be incorrect two is correct why because yes as i said it seesaw is a platform which uh, helps the students to work on these you know specific uh, given content right okay now coming to the next question which of them are the strategies of cognitive apprenticeship so cognitive apprenticeship now yes now coming to this question so cognitive apprenticeship it's a plat uh, i mean sorry the strategy so this strategy talks about you know it talks about modeling it talks about coaching sorry okay it talks about scaffolding we discussed this right okay it talks about articulation i'll help you to understand what is this these are the strategies reflection okay and this is basically exploration right okay so now modeling as i said it is something you know it's a conceptual model coaching it helps to acquire the knowledge scaffolding gives you the support articulation helps you to think aloud okay articulate reflection gives you the uh, evaluation comparison and exploration gives you you know the uh, gives you a new product okay so this is something which is done in order to ensure your cognitive strategy you know works up right so basically this is all uh, talking about what the skills of the learners so from these so these are the six skills right so they have given you the options so where this six stands so now see socializing cannot be a skill okay again uh, argumentation cannot be a skill okay uh, memorization cannot be a uh, sorry a uh, rehearsal is you know cannot be a skills with reference to cognitive uh, apprenticeship so obviously your b and d i'm not wrong yes stands to be what your right option but yes you should know these apprenticeship you know development for uh, the learners then only these answers will be uh, correct to you if you don't know the concept i have taught you you should now at least revise it coming to question number 20 yes now see now uh, swayam prabha channel on this uh, channels of swayam prabha i have taken a entire theory session it's the if you go to the playlist you will get that so here there are not such type of questions are coming swayam prabha detail questions are coming so channel 7 kautilya very factual question if you do not know anything about this it will not be you will be not be able to proceed so kautilya talks about what economics library science commerce finance and mathematics as i said it is very detail question so let's understand it talks about economics it talks about commerce and it talks about finance these are the right answers so as i said all the channels i have taken you should now revise the channels because questions on swayam prabha are coming on channels right 
yes remaining 10 questions are left so let's gear up and let's you know get maximum out of it statement questions swayam prabha courses are broadcasted on tv and moves are available only in english Snooze is nothing but massive open online platform. So let me tell you, maybe you are, if you are not aware. So statement one, you will be very sure that, okay, this is, you know, completely right. But moves, is it available only in English? It's incorrect. Maybe you are aware of this. So it's available in what? So this is available, you know, there are maximum uh, courses on uh, moves that is 130 out of which 130 has been translated in Hindi. Uh, followed by 94 in Tamil and 57 in Gujarati. So you should be aware. So please try to whatever, what number of courses are there, what languages are available. If it is vernacular, uh, you know, lang courses. So what are available? So you should be aware of this very well. Okay. You know it is incorrect. But what is the detail? So you should have a little study of it. Right. Coming to the next question, which of the tools will help you to prepare schedule and class timetables? Microsoft, Trello. A Google Calendar, Trali or Koha. Okay. So, you know what is Microsoft Outlook. Fine. This is, you know, it is what type of, you know, what exactly it is. Talking about Trello. So, Trello is nothing an online platform. Now, this online platform, it is, you know, it will help you to, you know, uh, get, it's a web-based platform which will help. It's an app, making application, right? Google Calendar, everyone is aware. Tally, everyone is aware about, okay. Talking about Koha. So, what exactly Koha stands for? It is, you know, open source library system. So, we are talking about, you know, see, if you see E, E is given straight away cancel. Trello, as I, as I said, it is what, what exactly Trello is, you know, you are a little bit confused. So, Trello, what, what type of, you know, function uh, Trello takes into consideration or what is Trello's function? So, basically, it is, you know, as I said, it is a, it is something, it's a collaboration tool which helps, you know, to organize the project into boards. So, it's obviously, B will also, you know, B will be right option or not, Google Calendar or Microsoft Outlook. So, you're preparing the timetable uh, and, okay, uh, schedules. So, these organizer, collaborative tool helps you to prepare the timetable. Google, Google Calendar does that. Microsoft Outlook does that. Because, see, D is again right, uh, sorry, tally. So, tally is basically talking about accounts. But in case if you do not know it, so then it will be very difficult. So, tally is normally we are aware, but you need to have some more detailed information, right? Coming to question number 23, what is not a characteristics of adult learner? Go with my style elimination. Adult learner are matured. They act rationally. They search for identity. They make a balanced choice. Often question the contemporary values. Now, Adult learners never have an uh, stability identity. So, option number C goes out. But again, two options are left. Uh, whether it is, you know, mature learners, yes. They are act they act rationally, that is practically. Or they make the balanced choices. So, which has, so in such questions, you should be very careful. So, coming, uh, sorry. Uh, C, yes. Option number C, sorry, sorry. Option number C, they search for, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm extremely sorry. It's not a character six. Now, see, such, you know, I was under the impression the characteristics of adult learner. It's not. Okay, obviously, reasonable, stable, uh, stable identity is not. So, here they have told to highlight not. Now, see, uh, you know, even I, I just overlooked the statement. So, be careful. Such mistakes happens and these are bound to happen. So, whenever there are not questions, make sure that you are trying to address them and look at them very carefully. Otherwise, you can just make a mistake and highlight something which is, you know, uh, not a right answer, right? Coming to question number 24, it talks about Swayam. So, it talks about four quadrants. So, as we know, what are the four quadrants of Swayam? So, let's revise the four quadrants of Swayam. So, four quadrants of Swayam talks about what? It talks about video lecture. Yes. It talks about reading material. Yes. It talks about discussion forum. Yes. And assessment. It's right. So, statement one is right. Now, statement two, uh, two see. Swayam Prabha has 34 DTH channels and it is, you know, uh, 24 by 7. Now, here you will be very overconfident. Oh, 34 DTH channel. Yes, I read it, read it in previous year question paper. It is right. But now you should know there is an update. It is not 34. It is 40 DTH channel. 
so some will be saying them are the answer will be both the statements are you know uh okay here see again i have purposely uh, marked this so both the statements are true no it is wrong okay this i have purposely done so that you should know that 34 dth channel was there when it was in that specific year when swayam prabha from 32 came to 34 but it is not so now ideally your right answer stands to be what both the statements are false because now channels are not 34 it is 40 so this is just to purposely highlight you have marked it but right answer is option number c so be careful now why because dta direct to home channels are not 34 they are 40 in number okay now coming to next question which are the learner centered methods now see we are we have done this third question on learner centered active learning yes i told you cooperative learning yes inductive learning or passive now we very well know that passive i have been telling you passive 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 is wrong so something that is the option number by default you can get the option a as right answer so when your concepts are clear and you know this elimination rounder it becomes really easier coming to next now see again here now you have to be careful what is not a characteristics of move anytime any device only in classroom anywhere moves as i said op massive open online plat online Massive online open platform, right? So now this is talking about what any time, any device, only in classroom, anywhere. So we know the flexibility. So only in classroom is something which is odd man now. Because here the question is about not, right? Okay, so the right answer will be option number three. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, yes. Okay, fine. You must have over uh, seen the answer, but it's okay. Let's Let's understand. We have again coming up with assessment. In non-reference, the student data, uh, sorry, test data helps us to determine the student place. Whereas in criterion reference, it tells about students' proficiency. So norm reference is basically you go with the norms. You talk about, you know, ranks of the student. In criteria, it tells you about the level of proficiency. So yes, both the statement one and two stands to be true, right? Again, on this topic also, questions are very common. So you should be very well prepared with this. Coming to question number 28, see again a question on learner center method. Demonstration, drill and practice, question, answer, cooperative. If you remember, I have taken four questions. In all the four questions, one thing is very common. That is a learner centered where the learner is active. It's nothing but a cooperative learning. Okay. So drill and practice, demonstration, question, answer does not become a very uh, close feature of uh, learner centric. Right. Coming to question number 9, non-formal learning environment. So, what is true about non-formal? So, what is non-formal where your child, okay, or as a student, you learn, you know, with respect to what? With respect to a uh, place and community, okay, where you talk about your uh, uh, society, where you talk about your uh, club, clubs or, you know, the group's age. So, learner does not take place, learning does not take place in structure way, does not aim at certification, which is true, huh? true. Learning takes place in structured manner, takes place outside the formal education, predetermined educational objectives. Again, go with elimination round. Learning takes place in structured methods, it is non-formal. So, there will be no proper structured. So, option number C, ideally will be wrong. Okay, again, what? Does it aim in certification? No. So, if you see the right answer will be D, that is, takes place outside the formal structure and intends to achieve predetermined educational objectives. So, D and E stands to be right answer. And yes, coming to the last question, nature of course of moves, we have matched the following organizations. Now, if you do not know their full forms, you may end up into a problem. So, that's the reason if you see uh, these full forms are always given to you. Questions are coming on acronyms only. So, be careful that you are trying to learn the acronyms very well and revise them very well, right? CC, Consortium of Educational Communication, IGNU, India Gandhi National Open University, NIS, National Institute of Open Schooling, NITTTR, that is National Institute for Teachers Training, and research so what it stands for so you have the options okay what exactly it stands for you have your time just to see and quickly come to the right answer so coming to a right answer option number a consortium that is it stands you know it basically goes for under 
graduate education ignu it talks about out of school students and i sorry ignu yes out of school students nio stands for a uh, school education yes and national teacher training stands for teacher training program so right option will be option number b got it yes so now uh, a very important announcement all those who wants to join our uh, our class that is global online please ensure that you go to google play store with the help of uh, global online okay just make sure that you download the app global online app where you can register yourself with the registered mobile number make sure that you are uh, getting all the information for paper 1 we have also given you know our um, details of uh, the sessions you know at the start we have also given the uh, we have also you know in the next slide we have added the contact details so make sure that the contact details are uh, clear to you and with the help of contact details get in uh, close with our team we have a offer for paper 2 and paper 1 so definitely you can get in touch with our team and ensure that you know you are having all the details and you can get in touch with us and try to ensure that you are enrolling for the uh classes preparing for your june 2024 session many more marathon and revision crash course coming up so stay tuned all the best and don't forget to update your scores everyone okay that's all for the day thank you everyone